Hello everyone! So this just arrived in my mailbox from the beautiful country called United Kingdom. So let's find out what I have put together for us this month, or last month rather, since this is August box. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It is just a sound I have to make when I see and smell delicious art supplies. Bring it all out on the desk. Ooh, a naked man with a little <laughs> leaf for censoring, thankfully. Sally just decided to lick her butt in the middle of my recording. That is not a very pleasant sound, you. I don't want you to lick your butt here. You have to go somewhere else. This pretty artwork is made by Jonathan Knight, and here is where you can find them if you want to look up their art. And he got the little budgie, they are so cute. Ooh, a little sketchbook. Mm, it is a little dented, unfortunately. Mm, that's too bad. It is 160 grams paper, so they're nice and thick. Oh, look at this. It's a rainbow colored sticker with a cross hatching texture. Very pretty. And what is this? This is super interesting. I've never seen these ones before. I am familiar with a chameleon brand. They make alcohol-based markers that can go from one color to another or from a lighter shade to a darker shade. So these are the Chameleon Color Blending Fineliners. These fineliners have a patented dual ink system with ink in the pen and in the cap. Oh, that's interesting. To blend the colors, all you need to do is to switch the cap to another pen and hold it vertically for a better transfer. Leave it for a few seconds and make vibrant colors to color blend. Yeah, and that is the thing with the chameleon markers that I don't like. You have to wait for things to happen. Just try them out straight away in this buckled and bent sketchbook. The sketchbook is called Crookbook by Claire Fonten, I think it's pronounced. So they got this triangular shape and it comes in red, yellow, turquoise, blue, very hot pink and gray. We got a little instructional sheet here. So basically there is ink in the cap and there is ink in the pen obviously. And to mix the colors you take another cap and put it on a different color pen. Whoa, the cap is huge, look at that. Let's just swatch them without any blending first to see what they look like. Oh, ouch. I accidentally stabbed myself in the finger. Oh, oh, I stabbed myself again. I'm not used to the pen cap being so long, so I'm holding lower on the pen, which results in when the cap opens, I stab myself in the finger with the pen nib. Aha, I didn't stab myself this time. Mm, just scribble over that little mistake. So yeah, let's try to make a turquoise and pink mix. That was very quick. Let's see if that worked. <gasps> Let's try it a little longer. What? Hey, let's try that again. What? Why isn't it working? Now it's on. It can't be anymore on. What? Why isn't it working? It worked the first time. Let's try the other way around. What am I doing wrong here? It worked the first time. Switch the cap to another pen and hold it vertically. Hold it vertically for a better transfer. What? What is this? Maybe I should try to hold it vertically. Hmm. Now it looks like it's working. Come on, turquoise, where are you? Yeah, there it is. Stupid me. And hold it vertically. I really like this idea, so now when I got that working, let's move on to the other art supplies. So we have a Stedler Mars Lumograph 4H pencil. Yep, it's a pencil. Next we have a Pilot DR drawing pen in the size 0.5, 0.2, what is it, 0.5. 
Oh, and we also have a little frutella with lemon flavor, I assume. The only thing we got left is the art prompt. Mm, so the challenge for this box is Rainbow Renaissance. Mm, exciting, so let's start, I guess. Mm, I wonder if I can mix all of the colors into one pen. I think the gray and the blue is the closest, so let's start with that one. I'm just gonna do a really, really quick blend. One, two. So let's see if it will create this like rainbow gradient. Well, it seems like there's missing some colors. All right, let's try it again. And then I'm gonna keep the yellow one on for a little longer. Let's see if it works better this time. We got the pink and we got the red. And yeah, kind of a very muddy yellowish color. And then we got the teal. Very greenish, slowly going over to the blue, the gray. Yeah, it kind of worked this time, a lot better than the previous one at least. So I think I'm gonna start with checking some references because I can't really think of anything on the top of my head when thinking Renaissance besides like Mona Lisa. I think she has been redrawn for about one million times now, so I'm gonna try to find something else. <laughs> what? That is amazing. Oh my god. It's a butt. It's a butt. It's a running butt with a spoon. What is what is that even? Oh, I can't help myself. Renaissance babies are just adorable. I had to resist drawing a beautiful Renaissance baby, so uh, I actually found this young woman with unicorn, which sounds awesome because the prompt is rainbow renaissance and when i think of rainbows i think of unicorns and magic and all that good stuff so this is a painting made by Raphael in 1506 and i don't know there is something so magical about this unicorn look at it isn't that just so beautiful it is like a mix between a horse and a sheep so i haven't really decided if i want to make a completely new drawing or if i just want to redraw it in in my style so i'm just gonna do some sketching to see what i like i think it would be fun to do something completely new and keep the like pose and stuff maybe i could give the girl like a space suit what about if I make her like a 90s or 80s kid with like a lot of colorful stuff and clothes and then the unicorn can be a stuffed animal. I think that would be pretty cool actually. Maybe I give her like a high ponytail, that is pretty cute. Maybe something like that would be fun. All right, hi, voiceover cat here. So I really wanted to make a chill, real-time drawing video thing, but it turned out that I can't talk while I'm drawing. It is like all my brain cells moves to the drawing part of the brain and leaves nothing left for the talky part. So I just forgot to say anything and I just sit there quietly for about 20 minutes and that isn't very exciting for you guys. Just hearing me breathing. Well, I guess some odd person will like that, not judging. Maybe it will help with some practice, but yeah, I am not very good at commenting while I'm drawing, so to be able to make this video a little more interesting, at least voice over it is for now. So as you may have noticed, I put a little more effort into this than just making a sketch in the sketchbook and coloring it with the art supplies. I did make a sketch in the sketchbook, but I ended up refining it in Procreate and then I traced it to a separate piece of paper, size A5 I think, which is slightly bigger than the sketchbook. And I think the paper is from a previous scroller box, so I wouldn't really considering it cheating if now anyone would think it's cheating using art supplies from outside the box but then on the other hand I'm using an eraser that wasn't included in the box but yeah I know some people are very picky. Anyways the reason I drew on a separate piece of paper is that I wanted a little more room to draw on and also that crinkled and buckled sketchbook really bothered me. I hate drawing on wrinkly paper. I would be so mad about that if I would actually have paid for this box 
myself. Now luckily Scrollybox sent this box to me for free, but yeah, I would be super mad about that sketchbook. And I wasn't really sure at first how to approach the coloring of this piece. I knew I wanted to make something similar to the featured art in the box with the hatching and all the different colors. So I just started. That is sometimes the best way to do it. Just start. I did a little bit of practicing in the sketchbook, but you also learn as you go. So I tried to just have fun with it. I did a little bit of cross hatching, but mostly just regular hatching, you know, where the lines go in one direction and they don't really cross. I really like the look of it, it looks very sketchy and messy but still interesting in my opinion. So yeah, let's talk a little about these magical chameleon fine liners. Since I don't have very good experience with the chameleon markers because there is a lot of waiting time for the colors to fuse and then the blending thing is very unpredictable and hard to control. So yeah, I didn't have very high hopes for these pens, but I think the whole color changing deal worked a lot better in this format with the fine liners. The waiting time for the colors to fuse which is like 30 seconds for the markers is only a few seconds for the fine liner pens so you basically just have to put on the cap wait for three seconds more or less and then it's done yeah it is still a little fidgety to control how and when the gradient will appear and happen but for a piece like this using this technique i think it worked pretty good and i am pretty sure that these fine liners are mainly for writing. I think they can be pretty useful for bullet journaling or writing birthday cards or whatever. But I can also imagine these being pretty cool to use for line art for example, if you want a colorful gradient line art. So the art I'm recreating is called Young Woman with a Unicorn made by Raphael. And it was apparently inspired by the Mona Lisa, which I can kind of see with a pose and all that. But yeah, it seems like the unicorn in the painting was overpainted at some point and was then discovered in a restoration in the 1930s, like hundreds of years after it was painted. That is so crazy. And I've been really into these painting restorations lately. I love watching them on YouTube. It is so fascinating seeing what's hidden below all the restorations and old layers of paint and what the original color looks like under years and years of dirt and yeah they made another restoration of the woman with a unicorn painting in the 1950s and then they discovered a small dog that was painted under the unicorn they believe that it was the original painter himself that painted over the dog with a unicorn they don't really know why but isn't it amazing that both the dog and the unicorn was kept under all these layers of paints for hundreds and hundreds of years like some sort of of time capsule it is so amazing Anyways, my interpretation is a little different. I tried to capture the original pose and expression. I may have given the woman a little more chin than she originally got, but I think it suits her. I tried to make my art a little more modern and as colorful as possible, having the rainbow theme in mind. And I really like how it turned out. I love the unicorn plushy toy. She got a very fancy necklace in the original piece, which I tried to recreate as one of these pacifier charm things that was very popular to collect in the 90s. I never owned any myself, but I knew a lot of people that had tons of them. Anyway, I like it, even though it's messy. I hope you guys like it too. And also one more thing before we end. I know that my channel has been a little dead for the past months and I'm really trying to bring it back again. And it would really help me if you guys could turn on notifications for my channel so that you will get notified every time a new video goes up. I think since my channel has been a little inactive, my videos won't show up properly in your subscription feed so if you want to click that little bell icon and you will get notified every time I post new videos. Anyway thank you so much for watching I hope I will see you next time. Keep drawing my happy cats. Bye!